Hi everyone, today I'm going to present our project titled Speaking Rain Normalization Across Different Talkers in the Perception of Japanese Stop and Vowel Length Contrasts. First, I would like to introduce the authors. I'm Misaki Kato. I'm a PhD candidate in linguistics at the Uni University of Oregon. My collaborators are Dr. Shigeto Kawahara. He's an associate professor in the Institute of Cultural and Linguistic Studies at Keio University. And Dr. Kaori Iremaru. She's an associate professor in East Asian and East Asian Languages and Literatures at the University of Oregon. So let's get it started. When listening to a speech, we process all kinds of variability. One example of this variability is in speaking rates. For example, person A speaks faster or slower than person B. Speaking rate also varies within the same talker. For example, person A speaks faster when talking about favorite movies compared to when talking about strategies to resolve conflicts. And as listeners, we take this speaking rate variation into account when processing speech. And one way that we do this adjusting for different speaking rates is that we shift boundaries of sound categories depending on how fast or slow the overall speech is. When we shift a boundary of sound categories, it's called phonetic boundary shift. For example, English B and P are temporarily contrasted phonemes because one of the most important distinctions between B and P is in duration and voice onset timing, VOT. So VOT is longer for P than for B in general. So in this waveform, depending on the duration of this VOT interval, this can be rapid or rapid. But in conversations, usually, we rarely say just a single word. We say a word in a phrase or in a sentence a lot of the times. So imagine that there is a word rapid or rabid in this sentence, and the target word is preceded by a phrase I'm going to say. And let's say that we manipulated this duration of VOT here into multiple steps from really short to really long duration. So here are different steps of duration continua for VOT from short to long. And y-axis is how often people hear the long VOT, which is P. So a quick question. Do you think the proportion of listeners hearing rapid goes up? like this or goes down like this as the VOT duration of a consonant in the target word increases from left to right. That's right. Because VOT is shorter for B than for P, listeners increasingly hear P as the VOT duration increases. But if we make this phrase duration shorter while keeping the target word the same duration, the VOT duration here now sounds longer. Now listeners are biased to report more P. But if we elongate the preceding phrase like this, this VOT now sounds shorter here. So in this case, listeners are biased to report less P and more P. And the shift between P and B, depending on the fast or slow rate of the surrounding context, is the rate-based phonetic boundary shift that we care about in this study. Another big part of our question is, to what extent listeners category adjustment associated with a specific talker's voice? That is, if we were listening to talker A and talker B, are we adjusting the boundary of some sound categories for talker A's speech and for talker B's speech differently? Or do we apply the adjustment strategy based on talker A's speech to talker B's speech? Some studies show that listener adjustment is indeed specific to a particular talker's voice. And this strategy does not generalize to other talkers' speech. But some other studies show the opposite results. Listeners generalize their perceptual learning of phonemic categories based on one talker's speech to a different talker's speech. Why the mixed results? Well, 
it's response it's possible that the specific acoustic characteristics of the segments that carry the contrast are responsible for example one study observed that listeners adjustment of the boundary between d and t was talker general but this adjustment of the boundary between s and h was talker specific now these contrasts differ in terms of whether or not the segments carry reliable talker information or not the acoustic information that differentiates the s and h contrast also carries talker information such as male versus female difference in the spectral characteristics but the acoustic information that differentiates the dt contrast does not really carry the male and female difference in the VOT duration difference. So in the current study, we test this question regarding talker specificity of listeners category boundary adjustment using two different types of temporally contrastive phonemes. So in the current study, we examined the effect of speaking rate variation of the surrounding context on the perception of temporally contrastive phonemes. We examine whether the phonetic boundary shift of a target duration contrast happens when the talker of the surrounding speech and the target word is the same, or and also whether the shift still happens when the talkers of the surrounding speech and the target word are different. We examine this question using Japanese duration contrast in different segments, in vowels and consonants. So these are both duration contrasts, but they differ in terms of whether or not they carry reliable talker information. That is, the difference between male versus female voice is carried in the difference in spectral characteristics of the vowels, but it's manifested much less clearly in the closure or silence intervals of the stops. So what we are going to examine here is whether a speaking rate of sp the preceding speech impacts the perception of the target contrast when these two things are produced by different talkers, and if this pattern looks different for the vowel and consonant contrast. In the current study, we recruited 15 native Japanese listeners residing in the US at the time of testing. Two native Japanese talkers recorded precursor phrase and the target words. The talkers were male and female talker, and these talkers were different from the listeners. The talkers recorded precursor phrase, kikoeta kotoba wa, that means the word I heard was, and the normal rate, like this, kikoeta kotoba wa, and we created fast and slow rate. Kikoeta kotoba wa, kikoeta kotoba wa, they also recorded target words, which were not real words in Japanese. The segment varied was consonant closure and vowel. These segments were varied into five-step continua from short 60 milliseconds to long uh, duration, 140 milliseconds. I'm going to play the short one and the long one for both consonant and vowel segments. Echo. Echo. Is, is. So these precursors, um, normal and fast and slow rates, and the target words were concatenated into two different conditions. In the congruent condition, precursor and target voices matched, but in the incongruent conditions, precursor and target voices did not match. So for example, I'm going to play the female-female version first. <laughs> and the male-female version. These combinations resulted into 120 unique stimuli. Uh, if you would like to see the calculation in details, please stop the video here, but I'm going to move on. In the perception experiment, the native Japanese listeners participated in the forced choice perception test. In each trial, they listened to a sound. And then they were asked to choose one of the two options displayed on the computer screen in Japanese. And they were instructed to respond as quickly and accurately as possible. 
The consonant and vowel trials were blocked, and the order of the two blocks were counterbalanced across participants. In each block, participants heard each item five times in the randomized order. So here we're going to show you some predictions. The graphs are divided by the results of consonant and vowel contrasts and in the congruent conditions and the incongruent conditions. X-axis is the five steps of the duration continuum from short to long duration. And Y-axis is the proportion of listeners' long response, that is the long consonant and long vowel. We expect that as the target segment duration increases, listeners are more likely to hear long consonant or long vowel. In terms of the effect of precursor rate, we expect that the precursor rate, uh, when the precursor rate is fast, listeners' responses are going to shift to long responses. And when the precursor rate is slow, listeners' responses are going to shift to short responses. We expect the same thing for vowel contrast. But the question here is, do these patterns persist when the precursor voice and the target voice do not match? And for the consonant and the vowel contrast. Because consonants do not really carry reliable talker information, we expect that the shift would happen. But the vowel contrast do carry reliable talker information, so the shift might not happen. Let's see if that's the case. So here's the results. What we see is that long response generally increased along the five-step five step duration continua from short to long. That is, listeners reported hearing a long consonant and long vowel as the duration of the target segment increased. And we see differences between the fast and normal and slow lines in these uh, three lines here. Even in the incongruent conditions, where the talker of the precursor phrase and the target word was different. And importantly, in the vowel segments, where the contrast carry reliable talker information. In the next slide, I'm going to show a different illustration of the same results, where we examine the effect of the fast, normal, and the slow rates more closely. So in this plot, the target segment duration continua is collapsed, highlighting the effect of segment condition and precursor rate. This plot shows that the effects of precursor rates on listeners' perception differed across different segments. That is, in the consonant segment, uh, there was a significant difference between fast and slow, and also normal and fast. But in the vowel segments, there was a difference between fast and slow, and normal and slow. So this shows that the precursor rate effects were present for both consonant and vowel segments, but the source of the difference varies slightly. And these patterns of precursor rate effects on the perception of different segments were similar in the two conditions, that is, in the, in, in the congruent and also in the incongruent conditions. So these results show that the native Japanese listener's perception of contrasted phonemes was influenced by the speaking rate of the precursor phrase. That is, the faster the precursor rate was, the more often the target phoneme was perceived um, as the long phoneme, that is, the long consonant and the long vowel. And this pattern persisted when the talker of the precursor and the target matched and also mismatched. This pattern also persisted regardless of whether the target segments carry reliable talker information, that is the vowel segment, or when it did not in the consonant segments. These results suggest that the listener's rate-based adjustments may be independent of talkers. These results also provide support for an argument that rate-based normalization may be an obligatory process that is, rate-based perception may be governed by 
um, general auditory normalization process that can occur early in the perception, meaning that the extraction of rate-based information may occur earlier than when we process the talker information, that is, uh, when we segregate, segregate different talkers' voices. So although the current results did not show the effects of talker information, it is possible that listeners may be more sensitive to that kind of information when they're exposed to within talker variation that is specific to a particular talker. So for example, one talker speaking rate could vary in a faster range, but another talker speaking rate could vary more in a slower range, right? So in the future investigation, we may investigate um, the nature of generality and also specificity of this rate-based perception and then how this might relate to the type of phonetic environment that is um, vowel or consonant segments that carries this information. Finally, we would like to thank Miko Suzuki and Haley Brown for their help with the data collection. If you have any questions or comments, please let us know, and thank you for listening.